So in this video, we will talk about number two from the 2021 AP Calculus AB exam. This question didn't appear on the BC exam in 2021. And this question involves two particles moving along the x-axis. So for particle P, uh, they give us the velocity function for particle P. They tell us that velocity function holds from zero to pi. And then they give us the initial position of particle P. It's at x equals five at time zero. They do something similar for particle Q. Uh, so different velocity function for particle Q uh, also holds from zero to pi. And then they give us the initial position of particle Q as well. So at time zero, particle Q is at x equals 10. We're asked to find the positions of particle P and Q at time one. So you've probably done quite a few problems similar to this. Uh, if you've practiced enough leading up to your AP exam, we want to find the x coordinate of particle p at time one well we're going to have to base this calculation off of the x coordinate that we know which is the x coordinate of five which occurs at time zero so we're going to start with the x coordinate of five and we're going to add on how much the x coordinate for particle p changes by by integrating the rate of change of the x coordinate of particle p which is the velocity of particle p this is a calculator question so you see my calculator input down here for my old school TI-83. Uh, so as long as you show this expression on your page, you can evaluate it on the calculator and then hold that uh, three digit standard. Uh, you can either round or truncate to the third digit beyond the decimal. So particle P is at 5.371. We do basically the exact same calculation for particle Q. We have a different initial position. We have a, niche, a different velocity function that we're going to be using for our integral, uh, but this should be the position of particle P at time one and the position of particle Q at time one. Now in the next part of the question, we're actually going to use some of this information, and the information that we're going to use is the fact that particle Q is further along the x-axis at time one than particle p is. So if we look at part b, they ask us to decide at time one, which we already determined the positions for in part a, are these two particles moving toward or away from each other? Explain your reasoning. So I, I have that that answer from part a as, as my jumping off point here for part b. The x coordinate of particle P is smaller than the x coordinate of particle Q at time one. The reason why I did that is because I wanted to be able to define a distance function. Uh, and I didn't want to have to use absolute values. I can always use absolute values here if I if I wanted to, but I need to I, I'm trying to decide if the distance between these particles is getting bigger or getting smaller at time one. If I have absolute values there, my my distance is always positive, my my rate of change is always going to be positive as well. So I wanted to be able to define a distance function that I, I knew established a positive value for the distance between particle Q and particle P at time one. And if I have the bigger X coordinate minus the smaller X coordinate, that's exactly what I have. So the distance between the particles is able to be represented by, whoa, by what I tried to highlight here, by this at time one. Therefore, the rate of change of distance is going to be the derivative of that. So if I take the derivative of what I highlighted, that'll give me x prime minus x sub q prime minus x sub p prime. And that would actually be our velocity functions. So if I take the difference of these velocity functions, what I actually get is I actually get a negative answer. And, and you can check that on the calculator, right? Calculator is in play for this question. So you can check to see if that, if that rate of change is, is positive or negative on the calculator. I've determined that it's negative, and that's going to imply that the distance between the particles is decreasing, and that's going to mean that they've got to be moving toward each other at time one. Part C asks us to find the acceleration of particle Q at time one, and then say something about the speed of particle Q, and then explain our reasoning. So the acceleration, we would have to recognize that Accelerations, the derivative of velocity. You don't have to do this derivative by hand when the calculator is in play. We just need the numerical value of the derivative. So once again, you see my TI-83 input here. I used the option from the math menu to find the derivative of V sub Q at 1. Uh, and I got 1.027. So my acceleration at time 1 is positive. If you check on the calculator, you'll be able to determine that the velocity of particle Q at time 1 is negative. If velocity and acceleration have opposite signs, 
that tells you that your speed is decreasing anytime that happens. And that's the exact line that needs to get onto your page in order to receive that explain your reasoning. Sorry that my highlighting is subpar today, uh, but that would be what you need to get on your page in order to get that explain your reasoning point. They have opposite signs, therefore decreasing. If these would have had the same sign, then we would have had increasing speed. And then the last part of this question says to find the total distance traveled by particle P on the interval from zero to pi. One thing you have to make sure you do when you're doing a total distance calculation is you apply your integral to speed and not to velocity. Speed is the absolute value of velocity or the magnitude of velocity. So if I take the absolute value of my velocity function for particle P, that ensures that any of the, the stretches of time from zero to pi where particle P was potentially traveling to the left, uh, don't subtract off when we do our integral, they're gonna continue to add on and accumulate. And so once again, I've got the expression on the page, went to my calculator to evaluate it, have that answer rounded to the third digit beyond the decimal, and that is number two from 2021 AB.